Hello, it's Thursday. Yay, it's Dr. T on Botanicomy, alchemy of soothing botanic ingredients. I'm just going to allow Instagram and Facebook to catch up, um, notify all my loyal followers wanting to learn about the science behind oils that I'm ready and waiting to present another jam-packed episode today about a beautiful chemical constituent and why um, it is so very supportive to our bodies. So let's hang tight. I can see we are getting some people in. Yes, I can see the eyes starting to come in. Remember, if you want to um, be known, <laughs> let me give you a shout out. Go put in the comments. Um, say hi so that I can see that you're there. That way uh, I can give you a shout out. I can see quickly. Instagram is almost going live. There we go. Um, Amanda Dirks, welcome. You're in on Facebook. I can also see Quibus is logged in, which is really good. I'm still waiting for Insta. Yay, there we go. Started coming with Instagram as well. Welcome. It's another episode in my live chemistry series. Um, it's episode 16. <laughs> How exciting. I think there's about two more left um, before this series concludes. So it's quite exciting um, that we are going to reach a stage where we're now going to know about a lot of different chemical constituents and how we can swap oils out because as soon as we know what these chemical constituents do, we do very much become empowered and we know, oh heck, I needed this benefit, but I don't have this particular oil. I can swap it out for this one. So that is what this series is all about, this fantastic chemistry series. Um, just a reminder, this is my page, Botanicomy and Alchemy of Soothing Botanic Ingredients. And it really is my passion to come and teach you guys about why these oils work and the science behind why they work. I can see Natasha's logged in. Hello. And Joanne Trickett coming in on Facebook. Fantastic. Kim Putnam on Insta. Welcome. Good to have you on. All right, so let's get started. This week, jam-packed with the chemical constituent called citronellol. Now, don't get confused with citronellol. Yes, there's so many different names. I know they're all very close to each other. But today we are talking about citronellol. All right. And it is a monoterpene alcohol. Yay, Henny's also in. Henny, great to have you on again. Um, you're on Facebook today, so good to see you. And citronel citronellol, a monoterpene alcohol. Oh, all these tongue twisters. Um, Kubis van Toner, who's also on, usually has something to say about the alcohol. Now, the alcohols are really fascinating because remember, it's a functional group. There it is. Okay, and you can just pretend that the OH is the right way around. Okay, there we go. So that is what the specific citronel lol looks like. Okay, that functional group over there is what makes it an alcohol. And the alcohols are really amazing because no, they don't make you drunk. They don't intoxicate you at all. Um, that functional group usually just provides additional cleansing, um, I would say very calming benefits to the oil um, that has that chemical constituent in it. Okay, so that's what the alcohol is doing. Very relaxing. And when we're gonna be using it aromatically, it usually has very strong repelling activity. Now, I don't know about you, but in the moment I am bathing and putting into my lotion and diffusing the oils that are high in citronellol like crazy because in the area that I live, um, there's a lot of people, very green area, there's a lot of people with natural swimming pools. I, for example, have natural swimming pools, although they're not supposed to be natural swimming pools um, because of my um, organic sort of vegetable growing that I do. Um, and sometimes there are big bins that haven't yet been filled with compost and soil and that kind of thing. And then with all the rain that we've had, it becomes this very nice pond <laughs> for the mozzies to, to start going like haywire. And we get them in the day, right? It's those very annoying tiger ones with the white and black stripy legs. We call them tigers. Um, they come out during the day. They're just not night sucking like the usual mozzies. Um, but yes, the, the, the mozzies are rife and, and the citronellol being very insect repelling is something that is in my diffuser all the time. Um, I'm putting it into my lotions. I'm diffused. Yeah, it's just, it's everywhere. I permanently smell citronellol. Um, it's also very calming to me and to the emotions, but it's good for my skin. And we'll, we'll talk about that as we go through the science behind why it is good for your skin, for example. So the citronellol itself, that chemical constituent is clarifying. Okay. Kamikaze mosses. Yes, any. Definitely. I call kamikaze mosses. They are dodged. And I've got all these like little bite marks at night because at night, obviously, um, you, I have a fan on, um, but I, 
at some stage the the volatiles evaporate off my skin and then and then they can recognize the human skin again right um and then they they sort of bite and then maybe they taste some of the citronella i don't know <laughs> but then they leave and then it's these little bite marks it's so annoying so they don't get that very itchy yet but they still they still leave their mark on me i'm one of those people with the blood that they really love they really love me um, and my cat's noses when i look at one of my cats there is a mozzie sitting on their nose so annoying bev i can see you've just logged in on insta as well welcome and madeleine welcome on facebook good to have you on so the citronella being clarifying um, that is the the overall sort of feeling we get from the from the citronella um, almora welcome good to have you on thank you for saying hi so i can at least see the another eye that popped up <laughs> who that is um, and as the name implies in other words clarifying it literally means that these oils help to make clear Bev is saying she's also got a lot of mosquitoes at the moment and I can see Catherine is just logged in on Insta as well very good to have you on <laughs> so topically because they are so very clarifying really good for skin and hair and we'll get into the detail why in a second all right um, but also it helps on the emotional side to resolve ambiguous and uncertain feelings which comes from not being clear okay so that's definitely going to be a good one to pop in the diffuser so at the same time of like chasing the mozzies away we are going to get that emotional benefit from these powerful chemical constituents so they do say that citronella has an anti um, or a, an anxiolytic property which means it decreases o um, occasional anxious feelings it lifts the mood basically um, so like just picks you up right and because it's so very cleansing to the environment it's also very cleansing to the emotions especially when you feel when you feel very overwhelmed so um, helps you to restore authenticity wholeness um, purity builds confidence and it facilitates trust so it's a really good oil especially this time of the year to have around in the diffuser I can see Lizette has also come in just say hi in the comments where you're from that way um, more people will be notified that I'm going live so share the love in the comments there please any hearts or um, saying hi very much welcome oh Chris has just locked in all the way from the UK as well very good to have you on you probably don't have as many mozzies in the UK as we do in South Africa at the moment but hey <laughs> still a good one to have around great Kimmy has also said hello there um, on Instagram good to have you so on the emotional side look these oils are fantastic in a diffuser right but um, let's think about the safety side um, because in the tisserand guide for um, medical professionals they actually talk about the safety especially if the citronella has been synthesized synthetically oh Alka is all um, coming in on Facebook this time from Belgium good to have you <laughs> um, and the safety here is very much because of the lab synthesized one not what we find in essential oil it's still cheaper to make although there's so many plants producing citronella and it's relatively cheap to get it it is still cheaper to make it um, synthetically than it is and especially because citronella is used throughout um, in so many products for their insect repelling activities okay um, but aromatically interestingly when someone has a sensitivity to all kinds of fragrances i'm one of those people um when i used to work in a shopping mall when i was younger you know thank goodness i don't do it anymore or i don't go to shopping malls anymore maybe they still do it and i just don't experience it but they used to stand at the door and then they would like just spritz that perfume into the air oh you've got to smell this because by smelling it you're gonna obviously want to buy it and i used to run for the hills because every single one of those gave me hay fever so people who are very um, aromatically sensitive to fragrance synthetically synthesized fragrance chemicals when you're going to be using the synthetic citronella not going to be that great for you it's probably going to irritate your airways um, Joanne is talking about mozzies in summer where are uh, in Spain <laughs> Spain and and Portugal I found um, have got mozzies that I get very allergic to I really overreact to the mozzies there they have got some kind of superpower there maybe I've just become more resilient to the South African ones I'm not sure um, yeah <laughs> but they are definitely like hardcore there I wonder what they like in Australia but then again they've got all the eucalyptus the lemon eucalyptus there which is also really good with that insect repelling so 
the synthetic citronellol is particularly irritating to people who are a little bit more sensitive to the fragrance uh, materials. So when you are going, the, the risk dermally, in other words, when you're using it on your skin is less significant. There's less irritation, definitely. But if you are going to be using this aromatically in your diffuser or you're going to be applying it to the skin, definitely go for the pure thing. Um, and here, the, the dermally, the only reason why they're saying dermally, it's not as oversensitizing and irritating as the synthetic aromatic one is because the percentage I think of skin irritations that they find in the dermal products with the synthetic um, is very much equivalent to the exposure or the sensitivity people develop with the skin irritation to the um, petrolatum that's also usually found in these products right the the petroleums so because the, there's a, a you know people when they become sensitive to certain ingredients in things that they use on their skin generally become sensitive to all kinds of um, synthetics um, so it's very hard for them to distinguish is it the citronellol or is it the petrol um, petrolatum that's actually irritating um, and for that reason i always go for the purest thing that money can buy because i am more sensitive so i would rather opt for something with less toxins because i know it's going to do my body a lot more um, or provide more support to my body. Um, Live Daily Drops has just joined on Insta as well. Say hi in the comments and share some love. There we go. So the r dermal risk is lower, um, but I would always go for, for the purer products, definitely, I'd say. Wellness by Design is also just logged in on Insta. Welcome. So citronellol, if you say that word, what does it remind you of? Obviously, citronella, <laughs> which we have, right? Citronella is one of those plants that has been used very extensively in the insect repelling industry for a long time. And I've got to say, I've been using citronella products for a very long time and they never really did anything. And I just got that fragrance and it didn't like it, wasn't, wasn't fond of it, but it didn't really do much until I obviously found a pure, <laughs> pure product. Okay, this makes a huge difference in my life. Um, and it's very supportive to the skin as we'll, we'll learn, but it's not only in citronella that we do find the citronellol. It's actually found in a higher concentration in geranium and rose essential oil. <laughs> didn't, bet you didn't know that one. I can also see that Marisa just joined in on Insta. Welcome. Good to have you. That means your internet is also working. Wonderful. We have been having connectivity issues in the last day and a half. I have been diffusing my what should we call it? Calming oils, very in very significant amounts. But at least we're on live now, so it's it's working again. Um, and because we find it in geranium and rose as well, you can see that if you really don't favor the fragrance for citronellol, this is why knowing what the chemical constituents do becomes so empowering because then you know you can switch for a geranium, for example, or something that has rose in it, or even lemon eucalyptus. Okay, it's there in a lower concentration but it's also present in lemon eucalyptus. And you'll find that a lot of the products that are based on a more plant-based and a natural approach, specifically for insect repelling, have the chemicals in there that we find, or the chemical constituents that we do find in lemon eucalyptus, especially because lemon eucalyptus, although it has the citronellol, also has many of the other components that are also very insect repelling. So um, citronellol is obviously very well researched for skincare, for hair care, and of course the, the insect repelling. But when we look at the skincare specifically, why rose and geranium um, is very beneficial is yes, they are flower oils. So the flower oils tend to very, be very supportive for the upper layers of the skin, whereas the resins, for example, and the tree oils are very supportive for the deeper layers. The rose and the geranium, they're going to have that benefit for the upper skin layers and therefore be moisturizing or oil balancing in, in, the, in the case of geranium, definitely oil balancing. Um, so if you are prone to a more oily skin, geranium is definitely going to be the one that you do need to include in things like toners and even in your moisturizers. You'll get the insect repelling activity at the same time. But I think the beauty about these is the fact that they've got that citronelle lol um, is a antifungal against the organisms that are usually proliferating in the top layers of the cells which cause us that itchiness in a certain area of the body parts um, also between the toes um, that sort of um, fungal thing that you can get there these oils high in citronellol if you can combine that with something like a tea tree is going to be very very effective and that is why it's so very good for skincare as well
At the same time, for your hair, the citronella oil has also been shown to be very effective when we have irritation on our scalp, especially with adults, where um, we have those little critters running around that you usually comb out with a comb. Um, very effective in a supportive measurement with those. So geranium, for example, and citron um, citronella essential oils are very good ones to include in your shampoo and in your conditioner on a regular basis. So it's going to be really good for your hair care as well. Uh, Tina Frey is also just logged in on Facebook. So good to have you on today. Thank you. Um, just let us know where you are from, Tina, so uh, we can also see where our community is based around the world. Um, very exciting. <laughs> And then, because we are talking about the moisture level specifically, do you remember that geranium is going to be very, very effective, especially in a toner. So you can make your own toner at home using a alcohol-free, preferably, um, witch hazel. Um, you can buy that from any good health or natural food store. Um, and then you can just add a couple of drops of geranium to that and shake it really well so that it doesn't float at the top before you spritz your face. And then apply it with some of your other creams and lotions when you are trying to deal with those minor skin irritations that you do get um, from those fungal guys, okay? Um, the fungal ones that are not so fun, shall we put it that way. Um, to try and keep insects out of the house, you can always diffuse geranium, citronella, um, lemon eucalyptus um, near the windows, for example. Um, mine is sitting right behind me there. And I don't know what it is on this side of the house. Um, it is the shady part of the side of my house. So <laughs> have so many mosquitoes at the moment it is ridiculous um so i just tend to have my diffuser on all the time and i also apply it topically because then they zoom around me but at least i know they're not going to sit on top of my skin and suck me dry they really do love me um all right so let's also talk about internally now very important you can only use a brand of oil that is tested right so if you know you can get the lab results you know you've got a pure tested great oil then they're safe to be used internally, but I would not be using the citronella internally at all, right? Um, definitely go for the geranium. So the geranium, you can either put a drop in a glass of water or you can put it into an empty veggie capsule um, or in tea that is cooled down, for example. And the reason why we would be using this internally, look, there's many other benefits because of the large array of chemical constituents that you would find in this oil. But when we look specifically at citronella, um, there's a, a, a clinical trial on humans um, where they tested the citronella in combination with other Chinese medicine herbs. Um, and this was to see what the immune system response would be, where the immune cells would increase as they proposed while patients were undergoing a treatment in basically um, destroying their immune cells. And it was very, very effective, all right? So there at least is um, human research already being done as well with some of these beautiful chemical constituents. There's also a lot of cell culture studies where they are showing, especially those cell culture lines that um, are made to proliferate. In other words, when they're not only testing the safety of specific essential oils and chemical constituents, but also seeing whether they're supporting the cells to rather go into cell death mode when um, there's something wrong and they're proliferating continuously. And on the cell lines, it, it definitely does seem that the citronella oil is also very beneficial in that effect. All right, so you can see internally, very good for cellular health, very good for cellular health on the skin, all right, especially if we're dealing with um, the fungal guys um, or the little uh, creepy crawlies. <laughs> it sounds so horrible, but the creepy crawlies that crawl around your head, okay, um, very effective for that as well. And then, of course, in a diffuser, not only for the insect repelling, but for the emotions. So when we start looking at the oils that have them in, why would you choose between the different oils that contain the citronella oil? Well, you, you need to sort of look at what the other properties are of these oils um, because you may want uh, five or six different benefits all at the same time. Oh, Kim, you have to go, no stress. You know you can catch the replay on my YouTube channel or you can just come and catch it on IGTV afterwards or in my Facebook feed. All right, so uh, definitely come watch the end because I'm going to be announcing something at the end as well. All right, so please do come back, Kim. All right, so the, the geranium, if you want to go for the geranium because of its citronella that is in there, very high concentration, um, between 30 to 45. So it's actually higher in the geranium than it is in the citronella oil. Um, and usually we would go for the geranium when we want to promote the appearance of clear, healthy skin naturally repel insects. Um, I, I think it also has a, a, for me, a more appealing fragrance compared to the citronella, for example. 
um, and it gives a hair, your hair a vibrant, healthy glow. You'll see a lot of the DIY recipes where we make heat protectant sprays for our hair before we use any kind of hot treatment. So hair drying, blow drying in other words, or um, hot iron. A lot of those blends or, or recipes usually contain the geranium in there. All right. Uh, love, live daily drops, love geranium. I do too. <laughs> I've got to say emotionally it's very supportive as well. Um, and it is therefore very supportive also when used internally for the immune system, as I mentioned in that study with the immune cells that um, are actually very positively affected by using the geranium. And then the skin. All right, so if you're going for the immune in the skin, then choose the geranium. For those of you that are lucky enough to have rose essential oil, um, these rose that you rose oils that you buy for like, I don't know, a couple of hundred rand, <laughs> it's probably not the real thing. Uh, when you know how many rose petals it takes to produce a pure rose essential oil, you will have a small heart attack, yes. Um, oh, uh, Joanne Trickett saying her geranium is due to arrive in doTERRA delivery today. She's very excited about that one. Good, you chose a, a really good tester grape brand as well. Um, and the rose, obviously, if you are going to be lucky enough to have it, I have it in a touch format. And what that basically means, it's been pre-diluted, so it becomes more affordable. Um, and it's pre-diluted in a very good carrier oil, which is very beneficial for the skin. And it also increases penetration time because these are volatile. Remember, they evaporate off the skin very, very quickly. So you do need to add a really good quality organic carrier oil. The carrier oil are usually vegetable seed oils and they're heavy molecules. So they capture the volatile and it helps it to stay in your skin for as long as possible. So this essential oil volatile um, has longer penetration time, which is really amazing. Um, and obviously, if you are going to be using the Rosa Damask, das, Damascanite, I don't even know how to say it anymore. I haven't, I haven't been saying these scientific no names for such a long time. Um, basically, Rose is helped to um, useful to help moisture levels in the skin. Um, that's because of the citronellol that's in there. It reduces the appearance of um, skin imperfections, fine lines and wrinkles is also really benefited from using Rose. And even skin tone and a healthy complexion. Also emotionally very uplifting aroma and I could do a three hour lesson on rose, um, specifically on the benefits that it supports the body with. Um, so if you are looking for support with the nervous system, the skin and the emotions, then you're going to go for the rose. Okay, Together with the insect repelling of course. Citronella. All right, so that's the one that we in South Africa know all about. <laughs> but for the longest time, I've been using the synthetic ones and then wondered why they didn't work. I remember growing, I'm a camper, right? I've been camping since three, four years old. Um, and we used to have these candles all around <laughs> and all they ever did was fall over and have a fire risk. I don't think they really did anything for our mosquitoes, but in our minds, they worked, right? Um, but basically, the citronella has the... Oh, I didn't say the percentage, right? So for rose, the um, citronella is between 20 to 40, depending on where you source it and what time of day you harvest, etc., 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 because all of that affects the chemistry. Um, Kerry Towns has just joined. Welcome on Insta. In citronella, we have the citronella component that we're looking for at 2 to 12%, but there's a lot of other insect repelling chemical constituents in citronella oil as well. So if you're looking for um, pesky insect um, repelling and to soothe the skin, here we're talking specifically now again about um, you know the skin minor skin irritations or the or the creepy crawlies. Then go for the citronella. And if you remember my citronella lesson that I did, oof, it's a couple of months ago now. If you want to go and look at that, it's in the singles series because it's a single essential oil. There's quite a lot of things that the citronella oil specifically does. In supporting specific organs and systems in the body as well so you'll get that additional benefit um, it's a lot of detoxing for example very supportive to specific organs that ha um, is involved with um, not only digestion but with the entire workings of how the digestive process works because it's not just the gut um, so definitely citronella if you are looking for the insect repelling and the skin and then the, the, the detoxing um, that's the one that you're gonna go for then and if you want something that's going to help your respiratory tract, for example, um, have a really nice, clean, fresh smell and have that insect repelling activity, then go for lemon eucalyptus because lemon eucalyptus has got a beautiful smell. It's got that very lemony scent to it with the packed punch of the insect repelling. Um, and it's also, again, very good for skin care. All right. So that is why you would switch between the different oils containing this particular chemical constituent we're talking about today called citronellol. So although we primarily know it for its insect repelling activities, 
There's a lot of cellular benefits as well as topical dermal benefits for your skin as well. All right, so really a very powerful chemical constituent. So that's a lot of jam-packed information again. If you don't have access to some of these tested great oils and you want some, send me a, a PM please, a private message. I can help you out with that. And you can either send it on my social media, on my Botanical Me page, Facebook or on Instagram. You can also send me a private message on Facebook, on my Facebook profile, if you want to do it there, Tanya Yuster. Um, and I just want to give yourself, uh, give all of you guys a heads up. Our January Gut Health and Detox Challenge went really, really well. So I'm doing another February challenge, different topic. Not going to let the cat out of the bag today. Um, most of that information will be ready and available from tomorrow onward. So please keep your eyes out on my socials. For those of you that have already private messaged me to be in the waiting list for this month's challenge, um, you'll definitely get a private message from me with that link. But we are going to be starting up another challenge this month. Um, it's going to be supporting a specific system, system and organs in your body. So watch out for that. And then I think if I can just give you a heads up, the chemistry series almost on its end. I think there's probably about two episodes left. So by the end of Feb, my Thursday continued education, as you now know it, will probably close down for a while. I'm planning on something incredibly exciting. I'm probably going to call it the Botanical Me um, Academy. <laughs> really nice tongue twister there. But what that academy is going to be is a community where um, I'm going to educate um, in a lot more depth and detail to those of you that have that learner mentality who really like to know the science about why things work that want to continuously learn and upgrade your knowledge um, about why these essential oils are so, so supportive for our body so that's going to be coming in a couple of months time as well so looking forward to have you all of um, all of you in that community um, which i'll probably call botanicomy academy <laughs> but more about that um, in the coming weeks and months so very good to have all of you on today please remember to share this with someone that you think is going to benefit you can also go and put some additional comments in that increases the reach more people get to see it more people get to learn um, and that is the the name of the game we've got to try and get as many people educated as possible about the power of nature and how incredibly potent um, essential oils can be and how supportive they can be for your body so very good to have you on. I see you all next week, Thursday, for probably the second last episode. I've just got to double check and verify how many um, chemical constituents that are, you know, one of you know the more prolific ones, the ones that are present in a lot more oils are available. Um, and I'll let you know about that next week. All right, see you soon. Cheerio.